Hi there! Before we get started, I wanted to take a second to give the same content warning that I give every time. We get into a lot of very difficult subjects and we can pinball around between something really, really difficult. These kinds of things are sexual violence, domestic violence, uh, verbal abuse, emotional abuse. I don't just it's it gets rough. It can get rough. So, you know, take whatever precautions that you feel are necessary. From the bottom of my icy, dead heart, thank you so much for listening. Enjoy. Or no? No, I okay. was super, super busy. I'm about okay. like six. I'm like sixty percent done editing, so it'll be up okay. tonight, and then I'm gonna hold okay. on to this one for a few days before releasing. Yeah. Okay. Gotta do this now, or else it can't be opening it in the middle of the fucking recording. Oh yeah. <laughs> but and that also commits me to drinking them. I, I noticed uh, a lot of times when I have like a beer or seltzer or something, I'll mm-hmm. I'll get the can out of the refrigerator. I'll go sit or go do whatever it is that I'm doing, and I'll set it down, and then I don't open it. So then I just yeah. end up putting it back. I do that a lot with a lot of my drinks. <laughs> yeah. So opening them now, now I now I have to. Yep. <laughs> oh, woe is me. Uh, did the Steelers debut kicked off yesterday? Yes, and they lost so bad. <laughs> what to who? Who the hell did we play? Um, the 49ers. Hmm. Yeah, like I, you know, I work uh, 9 p.m. to 5 a.m., so... I think I slept like one hour or so before the game started because I will not miss a single second of the game. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and I was pissed because I'm like, I will, I fucking lost sleep for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was so mad. I'm like, what the fuck? It's like, this is not worth me waking up this early for. Yeah. Uh, I don't think. I'm trying to remember. I stopped watching football pre-pandemic. Okay. A few years pre-pandemic. Okay. I stopped. Like, eh. I think it was like two years before Brady left New England for Tampa Bay or something. Okay, yeah. Like, I used to watch football here and there, you know, when I moved out here. Um, But I really got back into it in, like, 2016 going on 2017 is when I really started to go back into it and yeah I'm just obsessed I love football I, I, I'll watch any game that's on like right now I have the uh, Bills Jets game in the background Bills Jets oh those are mm-hmm. the that's like the NFC or AFC East competition mm-hmm. right there is the, is the Bills yeah. versus now with uh, Aaron Rodgers at the Jets well, he uh, left the game within minutes for an injury, due to an injury. So, a <laughs> stupid fucking, like, like, I had to replay it because I was out, you know, getting food. And um, we replayed the the first half because, like, I was like, why the fuck isn't Aaron Rodgers playing? Wasn't he, like, a big, that you was know, a big deal. you're making a, a big fucking deal over it. And then they, the commentators mentioned he got injured, so I'm like, let me see his fucking injury. Oh, man, oh, man. Let's get into it. <clears throat> all right. I'm, I'm sure that all two of our adoring listeners will enjoy that football chatter. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, my God. This is Hard Shell Tacos. Uh, serving you up the fucking finest of childhood trauma. Um, today is September 11th. Uh, rest in peace to all those we lost today. The previous episode is going to be released the day that we're recording. So um, 
that's my fault. I'm a little behind. Been uh, been really busy at work trying to be a good boy and not slack off. And that's been going like, pretty well. Same. Yeah. I'm like same. Yeah. Um, I'm behind on classwork <laughs> though, not. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let me describe one to five from our last recording to now. I would say four again. Things okay. are going pretty well. I I did my last session of ketamine therapy, and the realization, I, or I guess the epiphany I had during that one, was what I had already known. What I already mm -hmm. knew was that I'm doing too much, and if I don't manage my time properly, a lot of things are gonna fall off. Like I can't juggle if I don't have time management proper. Yeah. So. Yeah. <clears throat> that other than the you know being a bit tired from like overdoing my overstretching myself, it was, mm -hmm. uh, it was pretty solid. So. Yeah, I'm gonna hop on your bandwagon there. I'm also a four, and I'm also a. Uh... <laughs> In the same boat as time management goes, like I've fallen so behind on my, you know, schoolwork because I'm I've been working longer hours at work the last couple of days, and yeah, I I need to I just got a email from my professor this morning. It's like, hey, you're behind. What's your plan? I'm like, I'll fucking catch up when I can. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I've, I've realized I haven't been making time for like that or even like house, like cleaning up my house or my hobbies, whatever, because I'm just drowned in work. And then um, I end up waking up, you know, I go to sleep at like 8 a.m., 9 a.m. and then don't wake up till later. But it's also because I like to, I try to give myself some me time when I come home from work since, you know, it's dead quiet but I'm doing things that don't include my homework. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm at a four too. And yeah, time management has been my little issue lately as well. If I had to pick a single word, I think on the time management thing, like, will you shut the fuck up? <laughs> um, with the realization of time management, I, it would, I already knew this. Like this was not. Mm -hmm. I knew that I was needing to do it. I guess the the ketamine kind of helped me grasp it in a more gentle way, rather than gotcha. beating myself up about it. Gotcha. Yeah, you know, I was more. So I'm gonna say, invigorated, is my okay. Is my positive word for the positive week or week two weeks, whatever the fuck it was. Yeah, mine is just exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just exhausted because of these long hours and then like I sabotage I I sabotage my you know sleep a lot but I fight it so it's my fault that I'm exhausted but yeah exhausted is the way I would describe your last week how it, last yeah time. yeah last week creeping into this week but hopefully I can manage not staying later and going to sleep at a better time after I come home <clears throat> I'm trying to think what I what I used to do oh I don't know if I've mentioned it um but like I worked at a overnights at a an IT data center and when I got off in the morning the I mm -hmm. would there's a circle k like just down the street which is right before I get on the highway to go home so I always stop in at the circle k and then, and then uh I get I would get like the strongest alcohol alcohol drinks they have which okay. they're pretty potent so like i'll get like two or three of them and then for the first like week i'm going you know putting it up on the counter and they're kind of looking at me and like uh, <laughs> um, it's a little early don't you think yeah <laughs> and, and after it was about the end of the week like when i realized like oh yeah no i um i work overnight at a building down the street so like this is my evening for yeah all intents and purposes yeah. After that, they were really cool with me, so it was always fun That's... messing with the morning crew. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I'm already realizing like when I go out there um, in a couple weeks, like my sleep schedule is gonna get so fucked, <laughs> like because everyone goes to sleep at an earlier time, you know. Oh, two hours and... earlier already. Yeah. Let yeah. Alone well, I'm. The, the, yeah. The traveling. Like, 
Yeah, like everyone will go to sleep at 9, 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. And I'm like wide awake. So I'm going to have to adjust my schedule to, you know, like my parents or that? something. I don't know. I always go to Or maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just like do that and stay up until fuck or and go to go to sleep at my 9 a.m. Oh, well, you God. won't have to deal with your mother at that point. That's true. If you're always asleep when she's awake and vice versa. That's that's true, but I'll I'll have to be very quiet. I have a bit of extra of like sleep aids if you want. Yeah, I might try some. Um, I stopped taking melatonin recently because I hear that it fucks with your hormones. Really? After a while, yeah. So I'm like, um, I don't want to do that. I didn't know um, that. So I just take I just take my Benadryl for my allergies. My five Benadryl. I take ashwagandha, L-theanine, and magnesium glyconate, and like all three of those are supposed to help you sleep, and like once they kick in, I do knock out, but it takes a while too, so hmm. that's probably another reason why I don't go to sleep till like 9 a.m. after I get home at 5, um, is because I'm waiting for all of this to work, but I do need to look into a sleep study to see what the fuck is going on here. Yeah, it sounds like it would be a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to look into that. Hmm, let's get into <clears throat> our fourth recipe. And these aren't pigskin tacos that we're cooking here. Uh, as you can see, there's a little... Maybe you do, maybe you don't. There's a little bit of a theme with these, but we'll, we'll see if you catch on to it. Uh, I'll start with this one, and it's... Uh, this is from the Let's Get Real pack. Into the level two. Do you spend more energy trying to fit in or stand out? I would say I spend more energy trying to fit in because who I am, I naturally stand out. I am like I mm -hmm. am naturally apart. I don't I don't necessarily view stand out in this regard to be good. Like I don't I'm yeah. not you know like the a person on a stage. Or something like that. I'm more of like the weird mm -hmm. person in the corner, and so like yeah. I, I, so I spend a lot of my time or energy trying to fit in, trying to connect with other people, and yeah, so definitely more fitting in, trying to fit in anyway. Yeah, mine is kind of a com I, I don't know if it's really a complicated answer. Um, I know that as a kid, I definitely tried to fit in. But even though I tried to fit in, I still stood out somehow. Now in life, I really don't care. I don't try to do either. Yeah. I don't, I don't try to do either. Hmm. Um, I just, I'm just me. And, you know, if you vibe with me, cool. If you don't, okay, cool. <laughs> I'm not gonna... Yeah. Yeah, I don't care. I don't care if I fit in or I like I don't care anymore. Um I'm I'm just me. And if people want to accept me as I am cool, if not, then all right. I'm not going to try to fit in with you, you know. I don't spend energy on either <laughs> anymore cuz I don't care. <laughs> How do you show people in your life that you care about them? How do I care? I try to remember, you know, small details like of, about themselves, things that they like, their birthday, whatever. Um, I like to show people that I care about them through gift giving. I guess you can call it a love language. Yeah, that's uh, a good way to phrase it. Yeah, but my that's how I show people I care. I'll do, you know, I, I put thought like... Yeah, I put thought into what I give people, and it's based off of, like, things that they like or little things I remember. Yeah. Um, and things like that. Um, but that's how I show people I care. And then, you know, I'll sometimes just send them a message or let them know, you know, that I care about them and I value them. So, like, with words and gift-giving is how I show people that I care. Yeah, um, I do the same thing with gifts and being really mm -hmm. mindful of, people's birthdays like their favorite movie or tv show or something make it about that or whatever is yeah. significant to them the what i'm curious about is if is remembering their like important things about them where would that 
lands because I'm looking at the five love languages in the book and I'm not sure if that's that would be like words of affirmation I know I was trying to figure that out too. Time. yeah I don't know yeah I, I quality words <laughs> yeah yeah I was thinking of that too as I was saying it, I was like well is that, does is. that also count I would probably maybe put it on like the line of words of affirmation maybe like just yeah. reminding them you know that hey I care about you, yeah, you're awesome, I pay I'm thankful, attention you know, to like, you. Yeah, yeah, so you I think it would fall time. into both. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. And yeah. then another one of mine, like, I'll do it through, um, I guess, acts of service, but that's also a trauma response from what I've come to realize. Um, but yeah, mostly with me, I, I, I do, like, thoughtful gifts and just letting you know, hey... <laughs> I pay attention. I care about you. Yeah. yeah. You're awesome. You're this and that. Physical. T what would be your. What's your romance. Romantic relationship. Love language. Like how do you express romance? Same. Same things? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the same. For, for that. Like in the beginning. I would. I would say the gift thing. I can't do it right away necessarily. Because if you don't really know somebody. Yeah, um, same. Yeah, it, yeah. It takes a little time to get to know what's important to them or what what they feel is yeah. special. But uh, physical touch is important to me, and um, words of affirmation, receiving words of affirmation is important. But uh, so I try to give those things as well. Just yeah. Because I I don't know what I don't know, so I can only give you love the way that I know, mm -hmm. the way that I feel it is. Hmm. <laughs> Acts of service was that, that that not understanding that was to my detriment. <laughs> yeah, that one uh, that one is a trauma response. If I've like been hearing stuff about that, acts of service is a trauma response. Uh, that's definitely a big part of uh, my whole being was acts of service. You know, doing things for others and putting them first before me. Yeah, I try not to do that one anymore physical touch i'm like looking through this list yeah, i'm so like physical touch i uh, i'm not sure about like with non with like platonic relationships mm -hmm. or non-romantic relationships yeah i don't like do that shit familial i'm tr i try to a little bit mm -hmm. i don't know it's a, it's a little weird though it yeah. still feels weird to me yeah like even uh for me in relationships physical touch is weird <laughs> um, like, I don't like, like, I don't like to be cuddled. I like to be the cuddler. I like to be the giver of the physical touch. Like, uh, I don't like to, I don't like to receive it. Like, yeah, I, got I love hugs though. I will take hugs all day, every day from, you know, family, friends, relationships. But if I'm in a relationship and, you know, my partner wants to cuddle with me, I'll be like, let me just cuddle you, because I don't want it. Because I feel weird, awkward, and I don't like it. <laughs> I feel <laughs> suffocated by it. <laughs> <laughs> and then partner's yeah. like, sorry for trying to love you. I <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how to accept that without yeah. feeling I don't speak completely that language. uncomfortable and awkward. Yeah, I'm like, I will cuddle you. Yeah, if that's like, what you like. Whatever. Uh, but I'm like, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't I don't know. I just no, ugh, I don't sense. I don't like it. But I'm like hugs, I will take hugs any single day. And there's gonna be times where I'll cry getting a hug. <laughs> but in relationships I can't be the one receiving physical touch because I don't makes me awkward, uncomfortable, and suffocated. Can't do it. All right, so this one, it, the next one in the medium segment is a fill in the blank. When I am open, I <laughs> blank. When I am closed, I blank. It's a two part. You I guess. start first. Okay. Yeah. So when I am open, I am, I'm outgoing, energetic, really jovial, happy go lucky, like everything's fun, everything's funny. Stop being so serious. If we're having a great time, no matter what we're doing, so that would be more of my open, like self, I suppose. When I'm closed, 
It's not necessarily the opposite. When I'm in a more closed modality, I'm more reserved. I can still have and do have conversations. Um, mm -hmm. I'm more reserved. Uh, like I may not necessarily initiate conversation. Um, I am not outgoing. Like I, yeah, I just fucking said that. Um, <laughs> when I'm closed, I'm more reserved. I would say um, I, I uh, value my solitude a little bit more, or the value, mm -hmm. or the company value the company of the people who I feel closest to. Yeah, I don't want to be just around anyone. My answer is gonna be same as yours. <laughs> Uh, when I'm open, I'm very outgoing, I'm very friendly, you know, I'm very positive and just want to, I'm laughing all the time, I'm comfortable around you, pretty much the same as what you said. When I'm closed, I'm also like you, very reserved, I'm very quiet, I'm very just short as far as if I'm responding to you or something, just short little one word answers. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like a recluse at that point when I'm close because um, like I'll still be civil with people and like like you said you know you'll you'll still kind of talk to people but with that I um, when I'm close I just I want to be by myself and I'm just very quiet yeah yeah very reserved yeah very recluse um, which is, that's usually how I am at work, uh, just because I don't really like a lot of people that I work with, you know, just like they don't like me, like, uh, and like people see it like, um, I'm very, like with the coworkers that I like, I'm very open on myself, I'm, you know, joking with them, really outgoing, joking with them all the time, but if it's people that I don't like, or if I don't know you, like, you're not gonna get that out of me. And I've always kind of been like that, like as a kid too, like if I don't know you, it takes me a while to open up, you know, because I got to see what kind of fucking person you are first before I, you know, decide if I want to open my open up to you or not. Yeah, I, I, I know how that goes. And like if I feel a bad vibe <laughs> off of you or an energy, I'm just going to avoid you at all costs. I'm going to be very short with you. I'm not going to be friendly. Like, I'm really good at reading people and deciphering who it is that I'm going to be opening up to and who I'm just going to avoid at all costs. But I think that's a strong response. Mm. I don't know if you do that, uh, but I, I still do that. No, not not with, like, body language or anything like that. That, okay. that, that to me is like, it looks, I feel that it's pop psychology, armchair psychology, Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess in instances it works, but I don't read too much into it. What I do, so in a previous line of work I had, um, get like developing relationships was really important. So you have to get, mm -hmm. to, you have to talk to people and get to know people uh, gotcha. to, to develop like a landscape of what communi certain communities are like. Uh, gotcha. The simple thing is if if you let people talk, they will tell you mm -hmm. anything you want to know about them. They will That's tell true. you everything you want to know. Um, That's true. It's just a matter of fact. You just give them open-ended questions, prompting them that prompt them into a direction you want the conversation to go, and they'll just go mm -hmm. with it. So yeah, I don't necessarily read people's body language. It might be a misnomer. It could be accurate. Could not be. I don't. I, mm -hmm. I don't think it's a sure thing, but definitely like the like a vibe you you might sense off of them when you are talking to them. That's a good mm -hmm. that's a good indication. And then yeah. how do they talk to you? Like are mm -hmm. they are they open to talking to you or are they more reserved? So with that, like it's easy to I, it's just to me it, it's just a simple matter of words let them talk They'll yeah tell you whatever you want yeah mine is like a mix of all of it like when i'm meeting someone for the first time i'm like really analyzing everything about you the way you're talk how you're talking your body language 
just your energy that you're giving off and it just lets me know right off the bat whether that's someone I want to invest time in or not but I think mine comes really from a trauma response because like with my mom you know we had to Mm -hmm. figure out what mood are you going to be in today (laughs) so um, in my limited experience yes yeah 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 and like I know that it like I've seen I've read stuff about a trauma response how like survivors of abuse they 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 can easily pick up on you know the danger that's in the room so like the not so great people in a room so that's kind of how I get to get a feel for how someone is just the the energy that I feel when you know I'm meeting this person and then just from there I'll jump into like what are they saying how are they saying it what are their body language say but <laughs> Yeah, I, mine is just a trauma response. That's how I just know how to read people since I was a kid. So I'm like, I'm really good at figuring out who's going to be a great person, who's going to be someone I need to stay the fuck away from. But uh, anyways, long tangent. Part of it, I like I, I recognize the same things in myself that you're describing. Mm-hmm. The, the need to to be reserved and be more observant of everything. Yeah. You don't know what you're walking in a minefield. And if you fuck things up, mm-hmm. you're going to get, you're going to get messed up. You yeah. Wanna avoid it as much as I, you can. Yeah. I do want to say, I call that trauma response, like my superpower, but being in like that f- fucking flight or flight response is not good for your, your nervous no, system at all. Okay, I'm, I'll just, I'm going to think out loud. So my think my thinking is that this um, analytical part that uh, gives you a heightened, like, uh, a fight or flight response, mm-hmm. I think this, that is um, just another way of describing anxiety, but just how do you, cha- oh, yeah. how do you channel it? Yeah, 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 100%. It goes hand in hand. So, do you, for sure. Do you ever think, uh, which it sounds to me like you're kind of aware of it, is if you're constantly looking at everything as a potential danger, you're never, ever relaxed. True. You can't be. That's yeah. some guy that I used to, like, uh, kind of hang out with. He was a friend. Mm-hmm. He's a mutual friend. So gotcha. He would he would always be talking about like particular dangers, and he looks at everything like it's a fucking enemy, like it's a danger. Mm-hmm. It's a danger sign. Everything. Yeah. I'm like, bro, you need to chill the fuck out, okay? Yeah. No, you are not important. Sorry to spoil yeah. it for you. No one gives a shit about you, except yeah, yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Like with. Like with me, I'm I'm not like constantly seeking that out. Um, for me, it just comes out when I'm like meeting people for the first time. That's when my flight or flight fight or flight response is heightened. Is like when that happens, and then of course every time I go see our family, I'm always on edge, you know, because I just don't know what kind of a visit am I gonna fucking have. But, um, it's definitely anxiety-induced as well, and it's probably why I, I'm, like, coming full circle here. It's probably why I struggle to sleep and sabotage my sleep, because, like, the time when I get home, it's dead quiet, and I'm, I'm able to be with myself, and that's when I'm the most calm, is, you know, when I come home from work, those few hours before I go to sleep. That anxiety and danger analysis kind of thing, um, yeah, keep preventing you or from having good restful sleep, it's referred to mm-hmm. as hypervigilance, acute hypervigilance. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm very hypervigilant, and I. Yeah. That's one of the things I like. Not good for like, you. That's why I'm like trying to reduce because, you know, I run off high cortisol too, and that's not good for my body. Um, so now I'm like taking all of these you know, supplements, vitamins that are going to help me reduce that. And I have noticed, you know, I'm not as, I'm not as hypervigilant as I was a few months ago 
before I started taking all these supplements. Like I'm more mindful of that. And now that I don't really work with a lot of people, it's helping me to stay a lot more calmer. And so it's starting to help, but I'm still hyper vigilant. There's going to be like any time, every, any time I go visit, you know, our family is when it's going to shoot up a little bit. But as long as I'm not in the same house as my mom, I might be able to stay somewhat calm. To put a bow oh on this God. section, um, that yeah. with the open and closed part of it, something that I've that I learned in that profession that I used to be in was mm -hmm. you can still seem open, like you can, but when you're talking to somebody you're not that you want to be closed yeah. off to, um, yeah. you can you can kind of give them pieces to seem more that that you are more open to them, thus mm -hmm. opening them up to you. Uh, for me, yeah. that's making jokes. If I make jokes around you, mm -hmm. that's not an indication. That's, you know, just keeping the room level. If I make jokes yeah, yeah. about you to you, then that's like the indication. If I don't make fun of you or fuck with you, I don't like you. I don't want yeah, to. Same. I don't want to make you laugh. <laughs> same. I have zero <laughs> interest in seeing you smile. Yeah, that's that's how I am too at work. Like there was an instance with this uh, coworker, she actually triggered my uh, CPTSD once because she reminded me a lot of my mom. She would like egg me on to like get a rise out of me, and like anytime I had to interact with her, like I would shake and stuff. And then my boss sat us sat us down. We had to talk it out, you know, because I'm like, it's not gonna get any better, you know, if we don't try to nip this in the bud and it's only going to get worse for me because yeah. I'm going to end up doing shit I'm going to regret and I'm going to lose my job so my boss we sat down with each other I let her know um, I straight up let her know because I told my boss I was like look I come from a long line of abuse she triggers my PTSD when she talks to me or tries to you know I'm like she fucking like with her every time anytime I would interact with her my body would just shake because I'm like she just fucking shoots up my anxiety there's something about her energy that's just oh just horrible yeah. for anyone to deal with like she should have been fired a long time ago because she's caused problems with a lot of people and she's still there um but like after this talk you know like we'll talk here and there if I see her if she's coming in the mornings as I'm leaving but it's just a quick interaction you know just very quick interaction man there's something else I was gonna say and I forgot uh, let's, my ADHD is let's really move, let's but, move into the yeah let's move let's, let's move, move on, on to the heavy section here <laughs> um, we act yeah actually we've been going a little longer than I thought we would but it's all right okay uh, now this one you're starting with when do you feel okay. least like a woman when do i feel least like a woman yes uh, like an adult like a proud independent person when, when do i feel, feel least like, like it piece of crap that cannot survive uh, whenever um whenever i'm with our family because they treat me like i'm not you know they yeah. still try to treat me like i'm a fucking little kid like, for instance, I had posted on, on, like, Facebook a while back about finding a tattoo artist while I'm out there because my best friend and I wanted to get a tattoo. And then my mom's like, why are you still getting another tattoo? And blah, 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 blah. Oh, your dad doesn't like it. Trying to make, they're like, they just treat me like a fucking kid, everyone over there. And they treat me like I'm a fucking idiot who doesn't know anything. So anytime I'm with our family, is <laughs> feel less like a fucking you know adult and i fucking hate it that's that's when i feel the least is when i'm out there and they try to talk to me like i don't know anything and try to tell me how to live my life and blah 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 yeah that's when that's when that's hmm. the only time times this might be a little bit of an i know it is it's not it's not might it is but like an like an older way of thinking about masculinity in particular is mm -hmm. that I am not very handy so I gotcha. I rely mm -hmm. on like YouTube and shit to learn how to do these things gotcha so I can do them for myself so yeah. for a long time I definitely struggled with that being mm -hmm. with having like YouTube being 
I guess my dad, so to speak. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, <laughs> about to say that, yeah. But then I kind of thought about it, so in a way it helps, but it's like, you, is it my fault that I don't know those things? Or did my dad just not fucking teach me? That's you tell your me. Dad just didn't te- your dad just didn't teach you. Why? It was that thing you posted on Instagram. Like, why do I have to forgive them when mm-hmm. they should be apologizing to me? Yeah, are you 100%. fucking kidding me? It's not my fault. I don't know. I didn't know how to snake my own brain because, like, it, even though it's really easy, right? You'd think it is. You'd think it wouldn't be that difficult to figure out. But yeah, know, there's a little bit of nuance to it that you that yeah you kind of need someone to explain to you. Mm-hmm. Another one for me too that I struggled with, you know, for a long time is like that I didn't feel like a feel at least like a woman is like, you know, not having, not being married or having kids. A lot of women kind of think they're better than other women because they get married and they have kids, you know, and like society has made it seem like that's the the only only way way that you'll really feel like a woman is if you're married or you have kids. But like, I really just got out of that mindset quickly because I don't want marriage. I don't care if I do or don't get married, you know, the kids thing I'm dealing with, I'm okay now either way. And it's like, not everyone is meant to have kids or be married. Not everyone wants those things. I don't need to feel complete or like I am a woman by having these things. I don't care for them. And I I hate women that like look down on other women for not having those things or wanting them. Like they think they're better, a better woman than you because they have these things and it's so fucking dumb. That's a really <laughs> silly thing. Yeah, I, oh man. And then like women who make their whole, like wrap their whole lives around these two things. Like that's really fucking sad too. You can be a woman without having these things and you'll probably be a lot happier. You can have an identity in spite of those things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's just nuts to me. Um, Real quick though, I do want to read what I posted today because I know there's a lot of people that yeah, you're right. That want to that can relate to this. So I came across a post early this morning before I went to sleep on Instagram. And I know it's something that a lot of people deal with. And it just says, what if we stop telling adult children they need to forgive the parents who harmed them when they were young, quote unquote, because they're your parents and start telling parents they need to make things right with the adult children they harmed years ago because they are your children. And it's something that I deal with a lot, like when I have conversations with, they're like, but that's your mom, though. Who the fuck cares? Like, (laughs) I'm the fucking child who has to heal from all this bullshit. And so uh, I I edited this out of the first one, but I'll mention it now. Oh, I I edited mm -hmm. it into, but it was exactly this is like, I have to, I didn't, it's a red flag when a man has a bad relationship with their mother. I see the logic. I don't agree with it, but I see the logic. So, but yeah, this, yeah. but I understand why you would think that, but at the same time, like that puts me into a position, a negative position for something mm-hmm. I had I didn't do. Yeah. In fact, yeah. I was victimized and that's why. Mm-hmm. And because I choose not to have a relationship with her, I'm the bad one like you yeah. don't even let when... you don't even give me the the possibility of explaining it to you and is that even like mm-hmm. first date second date conversation I don't fucking think so I know when am I supposed yeah. to tell you that that's why why things are the way that they are so, mm-hmm. yeah yeah that, like people really need to stop doing that because it's like you do need to look you don't at know the this whole story first off yeah you don't, you don't know, know fucking what happened anything. So, yeah. So, like, I know a lot of people can relate to that because there's a lot of us that have gone through shit and you have every fucking member of your family, family, friends, you know, or or even your own friends telling you, but that's your parent. But that, you know, but it's like we were the fucking kids. We were the ones experiencing the harm that our parents done. And now we're stuck trying to heal all of that somehow. And there's Um, no life experience that gives you a frame of reference 
to how yeah. to, to process these things. All you know yeah. is that your parents are doing this to you. That's it. Mm -hmm. Like, you and know like, it's not right, but you just yeah. you can't really explain it. And, like, even a lot of parents will be like, well, that's why you turned out. You know, like my dad says, yeah, like, you oh, turned out all awesome because of that. The fuck I didn't. I fucking hate your wife. I have a lot of resentment towards her, and now I'm fucking traumatized. Okay. <laughs> I. And it doesn't make. I don't. I. I don't like people that fucking say shit like that all the time. It really pisses me off. And yeah, I'm gonna go off on people from now on when they say, "But it's your parent. But it's this." No. No. Okay. No. I. I oh understand. I understand that they were just regular people that had their own faults yes mm -hmm. i get it i do because i'm a person and i have my own faults that would and i yeah. make mistakes all the time but the the caliber of mistakes that i make are better informed because of all of what because of all of that previous terrible experience yep 100 percent. and i because i know what it is to be humiliated of, to feel abandoned, completely forgotten. Mm -hmm. so yep. I don't. I avoid doing that to other people. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm more than capable of accepting responsibility for doing things wrong, doing something wrong to someone. Same. 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 I, that does not make me feel like less of a man. Is admitting mm -hmm. I'm wrong. If I am, yeah. I am. So big. What big fucking deal? I don't. Yeah. I'm either right or I'm learning. That's it. Yeah. But I think that might be, I think that makes me feel less like a man, is when mm -hmm. I get negatively stereotyped for how my Just familial, because of that. Because of how my familial relationships are. When yeah. they are that way, not from my own doing. I, yeah. Well, I did choose yeah, to agree. end them, but I'm not ending them because of something I did. Mm -hmm. It's because of what they did to you. Right. And you're just protecting yourself and trying to you know yeah putting yourself first <laughs> that for once cause... that feels really shitty it mm -hmm. I, it definitely is like i i can look back at a lot of my negative experiences and i honestly do feel i've come out not just a better person but specifically i feel i've come out a better man and i can be yeah a, a better example for mm -hmm. other, you know, youngsters out there to not yeah. make the mistakes that their parents might be making. Yeah, same I, same. I can be that. I can take what happened to me, what other people did to me, and I can make that... I can do better because of it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fortunate to say. But what really takes the wind out of my sails is when people judge me negatively for a situation they don't understand. Yeah. Right I, there with you. <laughs> I really do understand the logic, but like mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, like you every nobody wants to be stereotyped for anything. Yeah. So why are you yeah. doing it to me? I've had to start saying this. Uh okay. <laughs> what part of yourself do you struggle to accept? I'll let you go yeah. first. I gotta think on this one for a second. <laughs> it's a bit of a continuation. Uh, mm -hmm. of what what we were just talking about it's still that one piece of my shitty life puzzle that mm -hmm. hasn't been put into place uh, yeah there's a lot that I want to say mm -hmm. uh, not a whole lot of it is good I guess, yeah. not, I guess it depends on your perspective uh, mm -hmm. but from their perspective it won't be but anyway yeah that's I guess that's the part that I struggle to accept is like to use a previous question the conversation that I need to set myself free that's yeah. the part I keep trying to act like I don't need to mm -hmm. but I do I know I do and I don't want to because it's hard yeah I'm I'm on the same boat as you um <laughs> on the same boat as you and I've just been like thinking this these past couple of weeks you know I just feel like I'm gonna be forced to have these conversations when I go out there in a yeah. few weeks. Like I just feel like something is gonna come up that's just gonna make me explode onto everyone and it's just gonna change the dynamic of relationships that I have 
with everyone, including me. Like, I just, I feel it in the pit of my stomach. I'm trying not to, like, bring it out into the atmosphere for it to actually happen, because I would rather not, because I know it's going to be, <laughs> it's going to wreck me in a sense if I have those conversations, because it's going to come out in a lot of anger, a lot of hateful words. And but that's if you let it explode, forward, wouldn't but it's it? Like, I know, yeah, and that's just how I feel it's going to happen for me, and I don't want that to happen. Uh, Would it be different if you initiated the conversation in you know actually, on your own terms? No, it would end up the same. It escalate, yeah. It would end up the same. Knowing the our family, yeah. I like. <laughs> I know how. Like I told you, I know how everyone is going to respond to anything I do or say. I'm going to get gaslit. We're not going to be talking anymore if that happens. I'm okay with not having contact with all these people, you know. I'd yeah. be fine with that, but it also hurts me at the same time because I still somehow care about these people. I just feel like it's going to fucking come out when I go out there and I'm just going to not be okay because the reaction, no matter how, what angle I go to have these conversations, is not going to end up well for me in the long run. I'll still be made out to be like an asshole and yeah. blah, blah, whatever like the fuck. Were, Either yeah, way, I'm somehow. the one. It's my fault because everything is my fault. But uh, one way that yeah, uh, one of my first psychologists phrased it, uh, she said, drinking poison, expecting other people to die or you yeah. know, like hurting yourself, expecting other people to feel the pain. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I'm like, it's it's a no win situation. Yeah, for it me, really for is. Sure. So I'm like, maybe... <laughs> well, coming from, the, speaking from the position that you're likely to end up in, if if and when you mm -hmm. do, well, it... Yeah. It, it, you get over it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, the, it... it's a funny... I was kind of like, in the many times that I often rehearse that conversation, um, mm -hmm. my the way that I put it is, the analogy I draw is, you know, you foster kittens. I love kittens. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't? Uh, yeah. So I have yeah. kittens all the time. They're sweet and cuddly and cute. Their fucking nails are like razor blades, but they're adorable. Yeah, they are. <laughs> so how? And then at the beginning, people would ask me, "How do you give them back? Like, how do you not get so attached to them and you want to keep them?" To which I say, "Yes, you're right. I, they are super cute. They are super cuddly, and they love me, and I love them, and I wish I could keep them all." What makes mm -hmm. it easy enough to give it back is with, the, no kidding, within a week of them being comfortable with me and like trusting me and letting me pick them up and all that stuff, mm -hmm. within a week, they'll, they'll start sleeping in my bed. And within a week, they will take a shit on my bed. <laughs> this has happened without fail. Every single kitten has done it. Every single That's... one. And <laughs> so, be, like they're they're still like babies. They 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 can't like regulate themselves that well. They they get up, they wake yeah. up, and like oh well, fuck it's I don't I don't remember where the litter box is, so I'm just gonna go. Yeah, right there. I'm gonna go at this other edge of the bed where we're not laying. Uh. <laughs> so that so the uh, the analogy is the 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 parallel that I use that for is how how it's your parents. How do you not? How can you not? Don't you love them? I thought they're your parents. How can you just, you know, cut them away? Mm -hmm. And then I remember. Oh, that's right. You took a shit all over my soul. That's right. Yeah. That's why yeah. it's so fucking easy. Yeah. That's probably what I need to put in my head. You know. <laughs> with everyone. Yeah, just imagine little kitten <laughs> on the... faces on them and it'll be easy. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. I might have to try that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a uh, good one. Okay. All right. <laughs> the next the next one is when do you feel like the most authentic version of yourself? This is a little bit of a continuation of the when I'm open, but Yeah. I think this one I'm going to say same. This is calling for more detail. Describe that part of yourself. I guess maybe try to do it as a third person. You can take this one first. Sure. I'll start Okay, so um, my m most authentic self, when I'm like really fucking feeling it, and I I'm I've gassed myself up just right, no, not too overly inflated. I 
stand up taller. Um, you know, my shoulders are open and like pulled back. Um, mm -hmm. I look at people very directly without hesitation. Man, a few instances where this has worked. Actually, how I met my my ex was I was with my friends. We were at a bar. No big deal. Just having some drinks. It's just the boys. Mm -hmm. In walks a group of fucking like 10 to 12 women. Right? So there's a lot of them. And yeah. There's like four of us. These one of them has a girlfriend. Uh, the other one is, is 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 like being too much of a chicken shit. So I, by my fucking self, approached a fucking group of twelve women, by myself, mm -hmm. and like, oh, it's a birthday party. Birthday party means that we're taking shots, right? And then birthday girls like, yeah, fuck yeah, we're taking shots. All right, fucking let them roll. And then yeah. It's like, I can't... Okay, so I'm gonna need some help here because my friends are fucking cowards! I need some I need some help here. So I just kind of look at these two dudes that are, like, watching me. I'm like, get your ass over here. Are you fucking kidding me? I can't do this by myself. And that was it. That's what... Uh, that's what the most authentic version of me is. Is confident, courageous, unashamed. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm... I don't... I, that's yeah that's the most authentic version of me when do I feel like this though that's a little hard to say I don't feel like that version of myself very often yeah at, not at least yeah, not I'm, lately yeah I um I'm like I'm still trying to figure out <laughs> so to put another story onto it to give you time to think um mm -hmm. so I'm I write I write uh poetry I write short stories uh, among a lot of other things but so I've been I've got back into writing stories recently and yeah so I was gonna share them with uh, in my group my friends group chat it's like hey hey guys I okay. just wrote a story like I uh, want to know what you guys think and then um, actually one of them suggested a good friend of mine he oh. said put the same writing prompt that you had into chat GPT and oh, okay. have the AI create a version and then send them both without signifying which is which gotcha okay and so i did and one of them the actually the guy who lives in san francisco that i mentioned last time um he mm -hmm. he's a teacher and okay he was he read both of them and then he he uh mentioned mine and he said that has to be the ai one because it's there's too much detail and there's too many big words and that feels like a mm -hmm. real person wouldn't do that and then I said, I pull off the fucking cloak. Surprise, bitch! That was me. That <laughs> that is authentic me. I sound like yeah. I'm fucking throwing up a thesaurus. I just do it. Yeah. I can't help it, and I'm not sorry about it. Nope. <laughs> um, I just I I don't know. I'm fucking descriptive about a lot of shit in ways that people don't necessarily think about. I guess. Yeah. You don't stop. Like he was saying, like why would you describe? the characters reaching for their phone on the nightstand because it's vibrating a lot and the way mm -hmm. that i described it was groping into the darkness like what how do you is that not what you do like you reach out <laughs> you reach your hand into the fucking darkness trying to grab something yeah. you're groping in the darkness yeah. you fucking idiot <laughs> you're a teacher oh my god it's it's like, sounds like you need to go back to fucking school <laughs> <laughs> maybe go sit in the english classes Right. <laughs> uh, nah, oh it, it's fine. I I get it. I really do. Mm -hmm. Another real quick one to to finish up. My most authentic self. Like I wear enamel pins. I wear one if I'm going out somewhere. I am always yeah. wearing one. It does not matter. Okay. If I'm wearing a t-shirt, it's still I still have one. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So most recently, there was a there was an event I was at. And I wore one that had the, the, the phrase from Beetlejuice that Winona Ryder's character says to the ghosts when she first meets mm. them. And so I myself am strange and unusual. Yeah. And that's what I wore. Nice. So then like we went to little bar, bar and grill afterwards to get some, you know, drinks and eat or whatever. And mm -hmm. like, oh, what does your pin say? I myself am strange and unusual. 
And we're like, yep. Yeah. They're like, yep, Leo, you might be the strangest cat I've ever met. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you. I really do appreciate uh, that. Let me try to ant I'm gonna uh when do you feel the most authentic version of yourself? Mine is just going to be when I'm just by myself. Or when I'm like making my music. Making the um, music. That's a good one. Because like, cause like I really let my <sighs> emotions or whatever just come out. The creativity is like really heightened. Um, the and song just... titles are like a description of what you're feeling at the time, right? Yes. Yeah. Like what I'm feeling or what I feel, you know, is the vibe of that song. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like I really pour myself <laughs> into that. I do um, the same thing with poetry. Yeah, yeah. So that's probably when I feel most authentic. Um, and like, I'm even going to say it like just with you on this podcast, I'm able to be myself. I might, this is me, you know. Um, I'm going to put in the like the sitcom or Family Matters. Oh, sound. God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true though, because like, I, I, I've always like told you, like, you you're probably the only one who will understand me more than anyone because of, you know, we were, we went through the uh, same yeah, shit. Yeah, unfortunately, we <laughs> so, had a lot of similarities like, there. Yeah, so it's like, I feel comfortable, you know, just opening up like this with you because I know I'm not going to get berated, judged, you know, gaslit, whatever, because you understand. So, like, I'm able to just, there's no, like, mask or anything going on when I do this podcast with you it's just genuinely me you know um and I, I don't feel ashamed about way. it and any of that but that that's the most uh, the time I feel most authentic is like just with me myself my music or whatever other creative outlet I'm trying to work on and creative outlets with, within one. within this podcast I'm able to be myself you know and not feel shame or guilty of being myself um so those are my two <laughs> what now i want to explore the music part of it a little bit more mm -hmm. like because for me i don't make music myself so i i put on you know particular playlists that really pluck at the at the strings of my brain in a matter yeah. of speaking so like i'll yeah, put yeah. on that and the way that I am when I'm writing is it's like tunnel vision. I don't yes, see yes. anything but my paper. And the only thing that I can, I feel that I want to move that I st still feels like it's attached to my body even is my hand mm -hmm. to write. Yeah. That's yeah. it. I don't, like yeah. nothing else exists. There's nothing yeah. else in the world but me and my paper. Yeah, that's how it is when I when I make all my music and stuff. I'm just I'm in the zone and yeah. like I like one of the last songs I did, I kind of want to go back and redo some stuff. Um but like I'll just put out whatever I feel in the moment. <laughs> if I hear a little, you know, sound that I want to use, I'll use it and then I build up from there and I'll add all this, you know. But I'm like in that tunnel vision too. You know, I'm like just immensed in that and I won't come out of it until you know whatever I'm creating is done it might take a couple couple of nights for me to to you know perfect whatever it is I'm doing yeah. or it might take me a couple hours and like the one of the last songs I made um I think it's called in it Hia. yeah that's the last one I made I had fucked around with some sounds to that like a year or two ago and then I just decided to go back to to it, and then I was like, "All right, I know I can." I and then I just made what I made. But yeah, I definitely just tune in on that until it's done. Um, um the thing you said about like breaking away, and mm -hmm. maybe it takes you a few nights. Th that for me, honestly, it, that's one of the hardest things to do, it, and it's also a really crappy feeling for just me mm -hmm. personally. I did not. You know, other people are different, obviously. But pulling yeah. myself away, like, I didn't finish it. Like, this isn't a pure creation because, like, it's not mm -hmm. created in a single session or single yeah. moment. Uh, my concentration, my, my thinking, my mood, everything 
that was in the first part of it is not the same in the rest. Mm, that's gotcha. What, that's uh, part of why, like, I don't, I don't edit other than like uh, grammar and spelling and shit. I don't edit yeah. or change my stories at all. What I wrote yeah, is like, what I wrote. Yeah, like that's how I am with some of my songs. Like uh, the one I wanted to read. There's a couple that I've wanted to redo, but I'm like, the that same feeling won't be there when I do it. You know? Maybe remix so I'm like, it. Just, yeah, yeah, and I'm like, I'll just fucking leave. I'm like, leave it as is. Yeah, leave uh, it as is. Put out the second version. Yeah. Maybe that's probably what I'll do. Um, but uh, yeah, I do that. But uh, like, if I take a pause from working on something, like I'll start it within a couple hours, you know, because I'll take a break to sleep or something. Um, but while oh, I'm sleeping okay. or doing other things, you know, it's still in my mind. I yeah. still have it in my mind. Like I <laughs> that feeling bothers um, me. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah, it bothers me too. Until I can get back to it, and then once I get back to it, but there's times where like I just get really stubborn with myself, and I'm like, we're not gonna stop and continue. We're just gonna fucking get it out. Yeah. Because I won't be able to sleep either way. Like either way, <laughs> I won't be able to sleep. Um, but there has been times where I've had to just stop working on what I'm working on because it just got frustrating for me because I didn't, you know, uh, come up with how I wanted to make this beat or whatever and then when I go back to it I it comes back to me and it comes back to me with some new insights um yeah like, I know what you mean I think like with writing I could see how because like if I were to do that like writing I'm I'm, a, I'm decent at writing too um but like I know if I were to take a break from that like that whole train of thought would leave <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. it wouldn't if... be as authentic um, but like for music it's a little bit easier for me because I'll have you know half of it recorded and I can go back and listen to it and then I'll probably get that same emotion whatever that I'm wanting to put into the song and it'll come back to me and I'll have some new little ideas to add in or to things to take out um, but that doesn't happen too too often Usually when I make a song, I'll make sure I get it done the same day I start it. But there's right. been a couple instances where I'm like, yeah, I need to take a break because this is going nowhere and it's frustrating the shit out of me and I don't want to work on it anymore. But yeah, I, like I recently came back into music. I lost interest in it after a while. Um, and then I just picked up my iPad a couple weeks ago and I started fucking around with my stuff. And then I'm like, all right, I'm back in. But that's just an ADHD thing. <laughs> I, I lose interest in my hobbies a lot. So, that was an interesting description of your most authentic self yeah. that you gave. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, as, it re, re, as it pertains to your cre music creation. So, like, your artistic mm -hmm. self seems to me like it's part of, like, m maybe your most authentic version. 100%. Whatever, um, whatever medium through which you express it is immaterial. 100%. Like, I've just always known as a, as a kid, you know, because, like, the first thing I started doing as a kid was dance. I was, like, four or five or something. And I remember someone taught me how to dance to, like, MC Hammer's You Can't Touch This. <laughs> I picked up the moves real quick. I did a dance competition. I won it. And, like, that was my first thing of creativity and then when I started to learn how to play instruments and then I was in band from like third grade to seventh grade like I've always been interested in like musical things and science so like that's definitely I've always wanted to venture into either one of those somehow but along the line way you know I got kind of shut out and it just came back to me a couple of years ago and I I love it. I love it. I want to learn how to play any instrument I can get my hand on. The only one that I struggle with is stringed instruments, so like guitar. I have a ukulele, but that's like my kryptonite right there is the fucking stringed instruments. Like I have no patience to learn to be taught or to teach myself how to play, but I'm going to conquer it at some point. I'm going to just power through. Because, like, every instrument I learned how to play, minus the clarinet, I taught by myself. Self-taught. But, yeah. Okay. I think we've we really got that heavy section in pretty nicely. 
<laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> All right, let's move into the light section. Uh, what fictional villain have you found yourself rooting for? Oh, God, you go first. I there's have no idea. That yeah, okay. Uh, I'm just going to say just because I have always been obsessed with the Little Mermaid. Um, Ursula. Ursula. I just love, I don't know, there's something about her I just love. <laughs> I just love her. She seems like so confident and I don't know. That um, is I've a always boss just... bitch. 100%. Yeah, that's, that's, I just love Ursula. I've always loved Ursula. <laughs> she's, she's, uh, I, I don't know if I would say, root. well, maybe I am rooting for her, but it's kind of fucked up what she does, but she's like a bad bitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I just love, I love her for that. <laughs> She's dramatic and confident. I yeah. love it. I love it. Um. I think I have another one that I kind of would root for, and it'll be Draco Malfoy. <laughs> Draco. <laughs> oh, man. Because, like, you know, his parents, you know, were into yeah, the he dark was born and into all it. that shit. And he was born into it. And, like, Product what is it? Uh, environment. Yeah, so I, I I root for him because I'm like because he didn't want to be those things, you know, just like when uh, yeah, and when he had Sirius Black and Bellatrix do the whole fucking you know uh, oath or whatever to protect oh, Draco because he has to kill Dumbledore or Severus Snape. My bad. Like I feel bad for him because you can see he doesn't want to do these things, yeah. but he has to act this way because that's what his dad, you know, that's what's expected. Mostly of him. his dad. Yeah. So well, I, I, after Draco later Malfoy, on. It... Later on, it's also that Voldemort expects him to do it too, and if he yeah, doesn't, he's too. gonna die. So yeah, but so I he, that's that's another one I'll root for is poor Draco Malfoy, man. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't excuse him being a racist fucking asshole. Like a yeah, that too. But, but um, still, uh, uh, yeah, he's a little sympathetic. Um, in okay. I guess the witch, maybe Black Phillip. The witch. Yeah. So with Anya Taylor Joy, they're like out in the woods farming because they got kicked out of their little congregation. Oh, I don't think I've ever. I've never heard of that. Uh, the Ninth Gate is a Johnny Depp movie where he is a book collector slash hunter. He like uh, he he is often commissioned to collect rare books from. You know certain people for uh you know for a commission obviously and so mm -hmm. there is a seek there are three particular books like it's a co the only three known copies of it's supposedly uh, the book is partly written by the devil and okay you know that's like the mystery of that he needs to figure out and in that story huh, i i don't know if it's if the the devil's played by a woman, I don't know if she's necessarily okay. a villain, but I was definitely cheering for her. Okay. In that story. All right, I'm gonna have to add this witch movie to my yeah watch the witch. List. It's might be spelled with two V's instead of a okay. W. I I don't know. It depends on how you look for it. Okay. Yeah. I it came up on uh, like Google as the witch. Yes. Okay, so it's on HBO Max. All right, I'm gonna add this. I highly interesting. recommend it. Yep, there it is. The in this this another lesser known movie, Session Nine. Uh, it's horror-ish, uh, suspenseful okay. kind of. Um, the can't tell you more than the the villain's name, and it's Simon. Okay. So Simon. I was uh, definitely ho wanting him to come out, okay. and and you see how he does because obviously he has to. But gotcha. Okay, I think um, I think my boyfriend watched that show. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but it seems like something he would watch. <laughs> Session nine is really good. Yeah, I would think uh, I think he does watch that. Uh, okay. Okay. What are you good at doing that you don't? enjoy doing i'll start oh my. i'm pretty fucking good with computers i make my living doing it i fucking hate working helping 
end users like people gotcha. and their personal laptops like their workstation i can't fucking stand it i don't just yeah. i don't want to talk to you i don't want to look at you i don't even want you breathing the same air as me get the <laughs> fuck away from me because i cannot do this with you breathing down my neck Oh my gosh. I think that's what my brother does for a living is he, IT. Yeah, as if I'm not mistaken, we're in very similar fields. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh man. Oh. That's interesting. I don't even think my brother likes people. And I'm like, that's your job. Not necessarily. There's aspects like now the only people I deal with are other mm -hmm. very technical people. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. So it's yeah. easy. Because we, yeah. they know what to what we're talking about. What are you good at that you don't enjoy doing? Mine is being in charge, like being a leader <laughs> in a company. Oh, being in charge well, is not. I'm. I don't I like mean, it either. Any, not to toot my own horn, but in like pretty much most of my career in the workforce, I have been in management positions. I love it, but I also fucking hate it because I have to deal with. A lot of employees coming up to me with all their stupid Whiny's fucking questions. Whiny, crappy fucking problems. Whiny. And then I have to deal with my own bosses, you know? Because I'm, I'm a very stubborn human being. Like, I'm very stubborn. Very stubborn. And, like, when it comes to my work, like, for instance, with my job, I usually leave a note for my boss or, you know, one of my other higher supervisors. And I give them a list of what I'm doing. And then there's times where they will change that list and it pisses me off because if I'm going to, I want to do what I want to do because I know it's going to be, it's stuff that needs to be done. Yeah. It's and two I hour compromise benefit. And do your, yeah. And I have to do this other shit, which will then put me behind. And then I'm going to have to scramble and figure out when I can do the things that I want to do. I love being in a leadership management position because I'm good at it and I've always been good at it. I'm good at leading people, training people, but. You just got to deal with all these fucking idiots at the same time. And it's yeah, I definitely just, know what you mean. God, like now that I'm overnight, I love it because I don't really deal with a lot of people. I don't have my boss fucking pissing me off every second of the day with his stupid, his own list of what he wants me to do. And just being annoying, I call him my annoying little brother because if he gets bored, he'll just start bugging you about whatever. But now that I don't have to really deal with people it's a lot better but yeah that's the thing that i so leadership i'm i'm good at it i'm very good at it but i also fucking hate it because you have to deal with all these people complaining crying and all this stuff Here, um, which is another, the part i hate the most another good movie to add to your list i trapped okay. the devil it's another trap is this a horror movie um no horror ish okay it's uh, it's okay. suspenseful it's thrilling there's no like monsters or gore or anything like that Let's see where, where i can watch this uh, i think it's only on amazon oh okay it's a good thing i have that all yeah. right but Let me that, add that's it, another uh... uh villain that i was kind of cheering for I'm like dude i want to you see the where the quote-unquote devil is trapped and you know, mm -hmm. like they talk to it and like come on like i want to see it get out of here <laughs> oh, so yeah okay. Uh, okay let's wrap up what is your current addiction my current addiction let me see well now it's football because it's back oh sure <laughs> football and i think that's it just football um football football listening to various podcasts at work let me see right now i'm addicted to ice cream right now <laughs> <laughs> i'm like it's weird i was trying to explain to people like with my adhd you just, you just like go on i go of stuff. yeah and like right now it's fucking ice cream ice cream but it has to be in the cones ice cream cones <laughs> like that's the only way i want to yeah. eat it a couple weeks ago it was fucking like Reese's peanut butter cups. That's the only snack I wanted to have in like yogurt covered pretzels. Those are That's good like, ones though. Uh, Those are really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. But like as far as food, it's um, definitely fucking ice cream and ice cream cones. Uh, and then football because it's on and it's back. And just li really listening to a lot of podcasts. So you mentioned that right... you're addicted to football. Uh, yes. Do you remember I asked you 
if you could guess the color of the thumbnail of the most of uh, oh. episode three, Re- recipe three. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. Steelers gold. Oh, Are you fucking right. kidding me? <laughs> I should have. I should. I should have picked up on that. <laughs> Man, I thought you would have got oh, it. Oh my lord. Because yeah, you were watching Steelers idiot. at the time. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I should have guessed it. That uh, did not click. That's all right. All right. Yep. My addictions as we head out. Right now, I have been doing logic puzzles. Ooh, okay. Like fucking mad. I, I, um, I bought this book a few years ago. I had only done like a a handful of them and now Mm -hmm. I'm a quarter of the way through the book and I just started doing them like a week and a half ago. Nice. Uh, So there's those. Um, I'm addicted. That sounds interesting. Okay. There's this show on on HBO or Max or whatever. It's called Paranormal Caught on Tape. Ooh, okay. Uh, Ooh, hold on. That's my fucking jam (laughs) right there. So just play this in the background. Okay. Like I'm, uh, I traffic in these like paranormal, UFO, extraterrestrial type of shit. Like I traffic in these circles mm-hmm. regularly, so a lot of the videos that they play I've already seen, but okay. it's the um, like the analysts paranormal. that they have on there to talk about it. Uh-huh. Is, it's fun. So. Oh man, I'm gonna have to. Uh... Just go through. Just look. At, that's some like yeah, background look, noise type of shit. Like you don't necessarily have to pay attention because it's. I mean, they nobody says anything committal ever. I'm looking through their episode list. I'm like the demonic doll. I'm like, I don't think I'll watch that one. So thanks to Chucky. <laughs> there'll be there'll, there'll be a doll. We'll just say a doll for example, and mm-hmm. it complete like it'll just like shoot up like it had a rocket bottle rocket up its ass it'll shoot up off the desk <laughs> and fly away oh Lord. and that's interesting and then the analyst will say you well you know that's a really interesting way that it moves if you see there's no force acting on it that we can see so it really makes oh you wonder God. shut the fuck <laughs> dude how did that thing like it like exploded off the desk how, how? Oh, dang, there's six seasons of this. Hell yeah, dog. And I'm like in season <laughs> oh. three or something. I've just oh been binging this shit. Okay, so, I'm like just... <laughs> Paranormal caught on tape while I'm doing logic puzzles while I'm eating nachos. Oh, man. I am That's... stuck hard on nachos right now. Yeah. You know what? I recently got into a chips and salsa binge, too. Ooh. Like, that's... Yeah. That's currently all I want right now is just chips and salsa That's and then one. peanut butter. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches are another one. My God, I crave those. You've come full circle from hating it. Yes, and... from hating it to now it's like one of my other food addictions right now is PB&J and Not ice cream. Those. And chips, yeah, chips with salsa. More specifically, Tostitos chips with their fucking mild chunky salsa. Mm. <laughs> Their their hot oh, salsa is actually kind of hot. I was kind of surprised. Yeah, yeah I always go for their mild one. The cheese one. I like the the cheese oh with God. chunky salsa. Oh, okay, it's I like don't think mix. I've had that. I'm like, I haven't had that, but it's also because I'm lactose intolerant. I don't even know if that's actually cheese. It's like yellow goop. Uh, that it probably they call it probably isn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you're right. <laughs> oh man. Fuck, I've also I'm also really I really have a craving for chicken wings. Ooh. But they're fucking expensive right now for some reason. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Obama. I've been like that. I've been <laughs> <laughs> I've been like that with a brisket lately. Oh my god. A nice brisket sandwich. I'm like, fuck. Okay. Uh and, yeah. <laughs> so these addictions and cravings are not going away i'm gonna have to get chicken wings or it's i'm gonna die of eating nachos yeah i'm gonna have to get some brisket soon <laughs> like um, pb and j i had that this morning <laughs> i'm good all right outro we want to plug stuff here do you have anything you want to plug um what's, what's your I, uh, how can I, people find your music you can go on to uh, either spotify or apple music or uh what's the other one soundcloud just search 
in separate words middle of nowhere beats and that's where you'll find all my stuff that reminded me to like i need to put a plug on the on the website our website yeah yeah but um yeah that's how you can find my music and then just share you know share the music if you like add it to your playlist give it some reviews if you have feedback i'm always open to feedback same thing with this podcast yeah. feel free to share it feel free to like do all um, feel please free to do comment. all that internet stuff uh likes yeah. shares Rating, uh, ratings you know, reviews all that all shit helps if you want to comment on something that was said or you know you want to suggest something to talk about the number is 833-LUX-PODS, uh, plus one if you're international. Homegirl is going to get you on the outro with uh, the website again, which... Uh, oh, I she, already forgot it. Yeah, she says LVX Entertainment, but you could do LVX Media, either one, .net. They both work. Um, there, there you go. There's... For, fair warning, there is a lot more MMA and boxing content on the front page just because that's how this whole thing started so if yeah you, if you give me a fucking reason i'll put something else on it dear <laughs> listener because i fucking love you so much yeah and yeah for those who have been <laughs> listening thank you yeah, thank for you. listening um we really appreciate it definitely share with others um this is gonna be recipe my... five yeah dang okay Wait, we are making awesome. progress yes 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 Oh, come and get your tacos, babies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for listening. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, we'll catch you on the flippity flip. <laughs> and... Thanks for listening to this episode of our podcast. If you have any questions or comments on what was discussed or have a topic you'd like to hear on the podcast, you can leave a message on our unattended phone line at 833-589-7637. That's 833-LUX-PODS. For more shows like the one you just listened to, go to lvxentertainment.net. Thank you.